everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Raw, fresh, natural, organic, unchanged, undercooked, crude, unprepared, red, inflamed, painful, no, 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 uh, no. As pertaining to style, classic, timeless. There is no denying that the raw wood look, say that five times fast, is here to stay and can be a fabulous option for the many rough-hewn furniture reproductions that are currently floating around with nowhere to go. Oh, there goes another one. But as with any good recipe or fable, it is all about the detailed ingredients, my friends, because as it turns out, looking fresh and effortless takes some effort. Ah, uh, here is my little effort requiring friend now. This is a reproduction Asian style accent cabinet that I scooped up for free. It was most likely made in this century, but had a lot of really nice details that you find with this style. The traditionally inward curved feet and super cool carvings on those front doors. Of course, on closer look, those carvings were very gummed up and blotchy, as was the entire piece. This is definitely one of those reproductions where the makers have used stain quite liberally, probably to cover up different wood species. There were also some pretty good scratches on the top of the cabinet. And it appeared to have had its lower hinges replaced with something less traditional. The interior was what you'd expect. Very dark and very dusty. And so, finding myself craving something not quite so rich and heavy, I began. I started by removing those two big doors and then I took out the shelves. looks like an old tape deck cover and a stray battery. Then I took off the lower hinges that were still on the doors. You can see we've got a boo-boo here. I don't know, I'm thinking I might just kind of clean it up and not worry about it. And then I began to clean. This piece was pretty grubby, so I got out the crud cutter and I went to town. Cleaning your pieces thoroughly is so important, friends, as is rinsing them. And even though this TSP alternative is technically a no rinsing required product, you all know how I feel about rinsing. Yep, it is time for the hose. Ah, so satisfying. Now this piece is clean. And now that it is dry, we can begin peeling back the layers of stain. 
I started on the top of the cabinet and of course immediately revealed a little patchwork of wood. This is how many of these reproductions are made. They are a true mix of wood timbers. I'm not sure exactly what kind of wood we're seeing here. Perhaps mango, poplar, balsa. I started in on one of the doors using a coarse grit and alternating between a flat paper and a foam pad for the carved details and the curved trim. The carved areas did actually appear to be wood, but they were attached with a kind of resin-like and red colored glue. And little blobs of that had kind of gotten into all of the cracks and crevices. And as I sanded, more and more of that red blotchiness was revealed. When I came to the hardware, I went ahead and I used my sander on it. Usually I remove hardware, but I really didn't want to mess with these pieces that were installed with those little finishing nails. I just thought better to leave them where they were. And so they are getting a little buffing. As all that dark stain and dark patina came off, I was really delighted to see the fresh raw wood underneath, patches, imperfections, and all. So here's something kind of interesting. This first photo is comparing the two doors after that one on the left has been sanded with a coarse grit, next after its medium grit, and finally the fine grit. You can really see how taking the time to sand thoroughly just absolutely transforms the wood. I continued on the body of the piece, moving methodically up the grit ladder with each section of the cabinet. Ah, here you can see how different the wood is that was used for the base compared to the body. And this top inset piece was so rippled, I actually used a fine grit pad and committed sanding blasphemy. <laughs> I sanded against the grain. That is how roughly hewn this piece and pieces like it are. They are the opposite of refined. And you know what? That's totally okay, of course. I am banking on the fact that there is beauty in these raw materials. Okay, so let's see about that base. I've been talking a lot about raw materials and the beauty of them and blah, blah, blah. In truth, my idea to keep this piece's natural beauty was to use just a little bit of paint to kind of help it along. So after using some Algonquin as a primer, I painted the base in this deep kind of grayish green called Everett by Fusion Mineral Paint. Now, I know some of us have feelings about green, but just stay with me. Hopefully you'll see where I am going with this. Then I took a little artist's brush and after dabbing a good amount of the paint off, 
onto a damp towel, I stippled Everett into the inset portions of the carvings. That green is going to help cover up that red resin that's showing through. And it's also going to highlight the pattern of that neat carving. And it's gonna bring just a little bit of that green up onto the body of the cabinet, kind of helping to marry the base and the body together. Okay, I am going to find the center on these inset side panels and add another special ingredient to help freshen up our salad. This is a transfer from Redesign with Prima called Petite Tile. I trimmed off the two end tiles that were halves, not complete square tiles. And then using the applicator stick, I rubbed the transfer onto the side. I did the other side of the cabinet and then I took the two lower hinges and I gave them a spray of this gold spray paint. I really tried hard to find matching hardware, but I failed. And these hinges are really a great match size wise to the originals. So I'm gonna do my best to make them match in color. Okay, now to do something special with that interior. This is some new wallpaper that I recently went ahead and splurged for. <laughs> it has a gorgeous dark background that has a lovely texture and then this amazing crane and tree blossom pattern. It is not peel and stick, friends. Oh my goodness, it's fancy, real wallpaper. So using my wallpaper adhesive, I painted that onto the back of the cabinet. And then I cut a piece to fit, as well as that extra little side strip that I needed to complete that back piece. And I fit it into the back, making sure to wipe up any excess glue. and using a really sharp new razor blade to do my trimming. So I just couldn't help myself. I went ahead and I added more of that beautiful paper to the sides of the piece as well. You can see it's they have kind of this lattice detail that's for their shelves basically to hold their shelves up. But that gave me the perfect little inset places to continue that wallpaper. Sometimes it's really fun to do something extra special on the inside of a piece.
I reinstalled the two doors and then I actually used a little artist brush to touch up that paint on those lower hinges. I also added just a tiny bit of dark stain here on that floor shelf of the cabinet where I had sanded off a little of the original stain. Okay, let's add our dressing and pull everything together. I used some poly top coat. This is by Fusion. It's a matte poly top coat. And I applied it over the entire piece. Okay, do you remember our red meat reproduction? Overcooked and a little too rich. In desperate need of a fresh approach. Well, here she is. Now. I'm feeling healthier already. No longer weighed down with a heavy sauce. Our mostly raw cabinet is a sparklingly fresh and stunning salad. Her soft green accents, shimmering brass hardware, and delicate tile transfer all blend together to support her exotic mix of timbers. No longer hiding under that dark, heavy sauce, this lighter, more modern interpretation celebrates her unique patchwork. Our cabinet may not be for everyone, but for someone with just the right palette, she may prove to be a true delicacy. So what did this deliciously eclectic roughage cost me? Well, the cabinet of course was free. I'm going to give myself a $10 allowance for sanding pads. It was a lot of sanding. Not your typical sanding job, lots of sanding. That petite tile transfer was $34. I still have about a third of it left over, but I'll go ahead and roll that cost into this project. I used about $15 worth of that beautiful crane wallpaper. I'm gonna say another three bucks for paint. It cost me $8 to get two of those little bronze leaf locking pins. I'll throw that whole cost in for this makeover. Not sure when I'm gonna use that other one. And another $5 for rags, cred cutter, top coat, etc. Bringing my total out of pocket cost to $75. So what might I list it for? <sighs> I have no idea. I'm a little stumped on this one. I don't know why. I don't know why exactly, but I, I yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a decorative, it's a decorative, it's, it's a, it's a decorative, uh, it's an accent cabinet. I think it's very useful. It's a nice shape. Two, three, seven, I, five, I, any ideas? <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. I don't know, maybe somewhere around 350, 375, but I don't know. Maybe I'll do a little more research and, and see. I really don't know. Ah. So what did you think? Did you enjoy our raw, fresh, uncooked fare? Or would you prefer yours well done and served with a nice, thick, rich sauce? Leave me a comment and let me know. Click that like button if you liked it and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future Fables dinner parties. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables. <laughs>